Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is urge. Let's take a look at some of the definitions or ways that we use this verb. The first way you might hear urge used is to mean to earnestly and persistently persuade someone to do something. So when we use this verb, we're not talking about just making a suggestion, oh, you should do this, right? But we're going to continue to remind the person. We might pro provide a reason why someone should take this particular action. So um, we're going to sort of continue to persuade. A second way you might hear urge used is to mean to recommend or advocate for something strongly. I've got an example sentence later that I think will help illustrate this, um, but I frequently see this word urge used in my inbox. Um, so I've signed up to follow certain organizations and many times in the subject lines it, there will be things like urge your representatives to vote a particular way on a, a particular bill. So here, right, they want you to advocate either for a, a certain new bill or maybe against it. A third way you might hear urge used is to mean to encourage someone to move more quickly or to move in a particular direction. So um, with this particular definition, um, I, I've been watching the Olympics and I watched a little cross-country skiing this past week uh, and I saw many uh, coaches urging their athletes, right? You can, you can make it up this hill, you can go faster, right? So move more quickly or move in this particular direction. You should know that urge is a regular verb. To make the progressive form, you're going to drop the E and then add ING to form urging. The past tense and participle forms of this verb are made by just adding D since this verb already ends in an E. Our base verb, urge, J, J, ends in a voiced J sound. So our past tense ending is going to make a D sound, urged, urged. Okay. Now, there are a few phrasal verbs with urge, and we'll take a look at them. Um, there are some similarities in all three of these. So the first one we'll discuss is to urge along. So uh, the definition here is to compel or encourage one to continue moving or continue progressing. So uh, compel, you might think make. Uh, so we're not really just giving someone an option, right? We're kind of making them do it. Uh, an example here kind of ties back to the earlier one I, I thought of. Uh, coaches have urged their athletes along throughout the race, right? So hopefully they're encouraging them, right? Not threatening them or making them move forward, but, but trying to be a, a positive motivating factor as they compete in a number of different sports and events at the Winter Olympics. Another phrasal verb you might hear is urge forward. Again, we're, we're talking about encouraging someone or maybe compelling or making them move forward or make a decision to do a, something, do a particular action. Here's an example of that. Many parents will urge their children forward on their first day of school, right? So you can do this. You're, you're a, a big boy, a big girl, right? You're going to encourage them to move forward, start going to school, take that action or, or do that thing. Another phrasal verb you might hear is urge on. Again, this means we're compelling or encouraging someone to take a particular action or maybe use some item or some tool. An example here. Caution is urged on the roadways today in these icy conditions. So uh, this is a passive voice sentence, right? Um, but these types of warnings exist on weather on, on days where there's really poor weather. Um, and again, people are being encouraged to uh, maybe drive a little more slowly, pay greater attention, um, be a bit more mindful as they drive because of winter weather conditions.
Now let's continue using our verb of the day, urge. Um, today we're going to practice using our verb of the day in the simple past tense and the present progressive. Let's start with the simple past tense. The nice thing about the simple past tense is that our structure is going to be the same no matter what our subject is. Okay, so in the affirmative, we're going to use that ED form of the verb. Here's an example. I urged my state representative to fully fund public schools. Okay. So I'm basing this on a real example for myself. This weekend, I wrote several emails uh, encouraging, right, uh, advocating uh, for greater funding for public schools in my home state. Now, if you want to make a negative simple past tense sentence, uh, we can do that by using did not and then the base verb. You might hear some people use the contraction didn't and then the base verb. The, it means the same thing. But notice we're not using the ed form uh, of the verb here in the simple past tense. Let's take a, a look at another example. At the beginning of the pandemic, Public health officials didn't urge the public to use more protective face coverings because of limited supplies. So um, if you're receiving any sort of public health messaging here in the United States, um, much of it now is focused on the type of face covering or the type of mask that we're wearing. So at, in the beginning, um, there weren't enough uh, high quality masks. Um, we needed those for our healthcare workers who were more directly coming into contact with COVID-19. So most of us got used to wearing um, uh, uh, cloth masks. Uh, many people made their own, which were great. But uh, this sentence here, again, is referring back to a point in the past. So this is a known point in the past. We're talking uh, about really an action that wasn't completed, right? They didn't urge um, certain types of face coverings that they are now urging us to wear. Now let's look at making a yes or no question with the verb urge. To do this, we're going to start with did, then we're going to have our subject, then the base verb. So again, notice no ED uh, here in our yes or no question. An example, did investors urge the board of directors to fire the CEO? This could be another example that ties back to the second definition of our verb where we're talking about advocating for a particular course of action. Now let's switch gears and look at the present progressive. Sometimes you might hear your teachers or maybe your textbooks call this the present continuous. They mean the same thing. I like saying present progressive because it helps me and my students remember that we need two parts, because there are two P's here, to make it in the affirmative. So we have to pay attention to our subjects here. We're going to use a present form of B, so that's am if the subject is I, are if the subject is you, we, or they, and is if the subject is he, she, or it. And then after our B verb, we're going to use that ing form of the verb. Remember, we're using this verb tense to talk about an action that is in progress or something that is happening now. Here's an example. Airlines are urging the Biden administration to end the COVID-19 tests for inbound travelers. So if you've been traveling internationally, you might know uh, to come back into the United States after having been abroad, um, many travelers are required to have a negative test within so many hours of, of their departure. But um, airlines want more people to travel, right? So they are uh, advocating for the end of this particular policy. Now let's look at making a negative present progressive sentence. To do this, again, we're going to use a present form of be, so am, is, or are. Then we'll use not, and then the ing form of the verb. Here's another example. With COVID-19 cases decreasing, many businesses aren't urging their customers to wear face coverings any longer. So here, 
Um, we're sort of talking about a, a negative action, an action that is not being taken in the present, right? Something that isn't continuing. Finally, let's look at making a yes or no question in the present progressive. To do this, we're going to start with our form of be, am, is, or are, whichever one matches our subject and the subject comes next. Then we're going to use the ing form of the verb. Here's another. Is your doctor urging you to have more tests done? Right. So uh, here this might be more of like professional advice, right? Uh, recommendations. Um, and, and the doctor really could be advocating as well. Uh, it's smart. It's a good idea to have some sort of follow up test. Now let's spend a moment looking at some words that are related to our verb urge. And the first word we're going to discuss is just the noun form of this word. So same spelling, same pronunciation. When we use urge as a noun, Many times we're referring to some strong desire or an impulse, right? Something we just have to do. An example here. We must fight the urge to hibernate in the winter, right? Um, if you live in a really cold, cold climate, right? Sometimes it's easier, right? We have this wish. I just want to stay indoors where it's warm. Uh, this sentence is saying, though, no, no, you need to go out. Fight this desire to stay indoors. Another related word you might hear is the noun urgency. So uh, this can be used a couple different ways. One would be to refer to the importance uh, of something that requires swift or quick action. An example here. More leaders are recognizing the urgency of climate change. Right? There are major impacts. Uh, to our daily lives, our, the severe weather events that are happen, happening more frequently. And so now some people are beginning to understand we really need to take some quick action to slow the climate change um, that's already kind of growing and, and rapidly getting worse. A second way we can use this noun urgency is, is to refer to the insistence, right? So someone, um, uh, again, not just suggesting something one time, but continuing to remind you, encourage you to, to do something. An example here, there was an urgency in his voice when he asked for help. So in this sentence, again, we're, we're sort of describing somebody just wasn't like, hey, it'd be nice if someone helped me. It's like, oh, I really need help. Okay, so there, there's something different there. Uh, this person is more strongly uh, insisting that help is needed. Another related word that you might hear is the adjective urgent. This uh, describes something that requires immediate action or immediate attention. Uh, an example here, she needs urgent treatment. Uh, many people uh, might also be familiar with seeing urgent care, right? So that idea, you can't wait a few days to get an appointment at your doctor's office, right? You need the matter or your, your condition addressed immediately. I want to thank uh, my loyal viewer, Robert, for uh, suggesting this particular verb. Uh, again, I love suggestions and I really appreciate them. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day.